He probably knows everyone who works there by name. Three-time Super Bowl MVP Patrick Mahomes joining us now in Sports Center. Patrick, a new playoff overtime format. Take us to the coin toss last night before overtime. And Fred Werner and the Niners, they win the toss. They elect to receive. What was going through your mind with that decision when you're on the field? Yeah, I mean, at the time, uh, I, 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 there's two ways to do things. And uh, our, we would have probably kicked if we got the ball. But they, for what they said, they wanted the ball in case there was sudden death at the very end of the game um, if both teams scored. And so um, we just knew that uh, what, what our decision was. We had talked about it. We had talked through it for since training camp. And then we talked about it all through the playoffs. And we're, we're re very well prepared. And that speaks to the coaches. And um, it prepared us to go out there and win the football game. So you go eight for eight on that game winning touchdown drive. What was the plan if the Niners opened overtime with a touchdown and then you guys answered with a touchdown? Would they have had a third possession? What were you guys going to do? No, we, we were going for two. I don't know if Coach Reed <laughs> won't be telling everybody, but we would have went for two for sure. All right, there you go. We'll use that next year when you're undoubtedly there again. I know that you said last night in our post-game coverage, Patrick, that this is the most special of your three rings just because of the path. And I just want to know from your vantage, what is the most improbable part of this run? Yeah, I think it was just uh, the see the championship mindset our guys had. I mean, we really um, continue to battle through adversity, continue to come to work every single day and just continue to get better. And I think that's a big thing. And, and sometimes in the NFL, things don't go your way. And how, how are you going to make yourself better every single day um, to try to be great? Um, and I think that's what made it so special to me is because I saw the, all the hard work the guys put in. I think, Patrick, maybe on paper people would say things tend to go your way. There's a lot of conversation happening about you today. Three rings and you're only 28 years old. And we hear a lot from the GOATs about what motivates them to stay on top, right? Jordan, those perceived slights. Brady, his draft position. What is propelling you at this point in your career? Um, something that's always uh, kind of took me to another place is just be – just never have any regrets. I don't have a reg any regrets at the end of your career, and um, that's how I've kind of lived my entire career and my entire life is I'm going to go out there and try to maximize the opportunity. And I know I was blessed to be drafted by the Kansas City Chiefs to have the, uh, one of the greatest coaches of all time, uh, one of the greatest players of all time in Travis. And um, I'm just going to go out there and maximize these opportunities and try to win as many games as I can. So when I look back at the end of my career, I know that I did everything I could to, to win as many rings as possible. Patrick, later in Jordan's career, he had the ability to manage the game and then take over late when the stakes were at their highest. How would you describe your approach during this postseason compared to past playoff runs? Just, just knowing the team and knowing the flow of the game. I think that's been the biggest thing is uh, we, had a, we have a great defense, and I don't think it ever – it got talked about a little bit there at the end, but they were great the entire season, and – um, I knew if, I, if they kept us in the game, we would make plays in the end, and that's kind of what happened in that last game is they kept us in the game that whole entire first half. We were able, we were able to get something going after I threw that, that silly interception at the start of the second half. Uh, we got some offense going, um, and the, the defense shut the door and, and made some timely big stops to hold them to field goals, and um, that's what uh, got us to win in the end. And so it was a true team effort. Um, and I think that's what it takes in order to win Super Bowls. Okay, you mentioned team effort. There was a heated moment last night between Andy Reid and Travis Kelsey on the sideline. We also saw an intense conversation between you and Rashi Rice at the end of regulation. What is it about this team's culture and your relationships that allows for those types of disagreements to happen, yet you guys can move forward? I think it just shows the love that we have uh, for the game and for each other. I mean, um, to be that passionate um, and, and to go out there and then want to win and want to be out there making plays and want to do whatever it takes to help the team, um, that's the type of guys that you want. Um, and just like families and just like brothers, man, you're going to have some fights here and there, um, but you come together even closer after that. Um, and that's the type of team that we have, the brotherhood that we have is uh, we can let our emotions show and then we can reel it right back in and be better for it. Um, and that takes a special group of guys and that's what we have in Kansas City. We're showing Kelsey right now. I'm not a lip reader, but I think in some ways he maybe said, I would like the ball more. And certainly <laughs> he got it in the second half. Patrick, how integral to the outcome of that game was getting him in motion down the stretch? Yeah, they were doing a good job. The 49ers were really kind of um, hitting them off the line of scrimmage, not getting them any releases and having help with them. Um, and then moving them around, I think, just got him some more free releases, got him some more room to work with. Um, and then he made it happen. I mean, there was a lot of tight coverage. He made some tight, uh, tight contested catches. Um, and he continued to work with the football after, after he made them. And so it's a, a true great player, a true great competitor, um, rising to the occasion. 
You mentioned that you've got the greatest coach of all time, Andy Reid, and we know he likes to eat cheeseburgers after these Super Bowl wins. You're making a habit of championships yourself, so any traditions that are developing after these victories now? Yeah, I think the best is just enjoying it with your teammates that night, uh, the night after. Um, with those guys in the locker room or the after party or wherever that is, coming to Disneyland like I'm at right now, and then going and joining the parade on Wednesday. So uh, it's, a, it's a nice little tight schedule that we uh, don't get a lot of sleep, but we enjoy the whole thing. Patrick, one of the things uh, that really stood out is your legs. Uh, like, you look like a mobile quarterback. We've seen this in the last two Super Bowls, two extending plays, and that was critical in that fourth down conversion, also that third and one in overtime. Uh, what is it about you being able to understand to slide at the right time and also when to run? Yeah, when you get to the end of the year, man, I mean, in the Super Bowl, you have to lay it all on the line. And so some, some situations I might not run in the regular season. I just put my head down and, and try to go get those first downs when we need them and um, that's just how we roll in Kansas City, man. We're going to compete to the very end. We're going to lay it all on the line. Um, and I'm, I'm a little faster than everybody. I say it all the time, I'm a little faster than people think I am. Um, I just don't run, I don't run pretty. So I'll continue to work on my running form, and maybe people will give me some respect about my speed. You don't have to run pretty. You run effectively. That matters the most. But I do have to say, speaking of which, for a guy with your level of popularity and fame, you do not have a consensus nickname that mm. the public calls you. And based on what you call your scrambles, I have one for you. How about Lil Boosty? <laughs> Lil Boosty. Uh, I'll, I'll think we can take that and run with it. Let's see what happens there. <laughs> Pun intended. Oh. Pun intended. Pun intended. Wait, real quick, Patrick, before we let you go. Is 13 now your favorite number as well? <laughs> uh, it's not, not, not my favorite number, but uh, it worked for us this weekend, and uh, I hope you have a special place in my heart for sure. All right, but before, one, one final thing. Favorite ride at Disneyland with the kids now, considering you've been there and you're a regular? Oh, man. I mean, anytime you're at Disneyland, you got to try out all the rides. And um, I think uh, my favorite is, uh, uh, what is it called, Toontown, where mm. you can ride, ride all those rides. And that, that's my favorite area. And Sterling hasn't been by me the entire time. She's, through these interviews started, she's been through the whole entire park. <laughs> I love it. I lo absolutely. Well, let's get you out of here so you can go back and hang out with your family. Patrick Mahomes, three-time Super Bowl MVP. I hope you can get some rest. I seriously doubt you've had a chance to, so we appreciate your time here on SportsCenter. Congrats. I appreciate y'all. Appreciate y'all.